so, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about his process, which was that uh, you know he he didn't get timing notes from a music editor, so there was no like written list, you know, at this time this and this happens. Instead, um, he was in in a in a room with a projectionist who would show him the footage over and over again. And he would watch it and he would sing along with it, or he would he had an upright piano there and he would improvise and he would sketch something out and then in the evenings he would go home. Uh, it was a short walk. He was about 10 minutes away from Warner Brothers. Um, he had rented a house in Toluca Lake. And uh, so he, he would refine those sketches and then he would meet with his orchestrator, his lead orchestrator, Hugo Friedhofer, which, who, as you know, later became a, a fantastic composer in his own right. Um, and they would go over the orchestration and then Friedhofer would go off and then the next day Krongold would go and watch some more footage and, and write music to it. And that's how it was done. Once the orchestrations came back to Korngold, he would look over everything, make last-minute corrections, and then it was recorded. And the recording, by the way, was uh, the favorite part for Korngold, as it is for most of us. You know, you, you see your work come to life, and Korngold felt very privileged that he was in a position where he would write a piece of music, and um, a few days later, you know, an orchestra would perform it, and it would get recorded. He thought that the music would live and die with a picture. So he thought that, you know, in the case of Adventures of Robin Hood, people would watch it when it came out, and then everybody would forget it, and his music would, would be dead. Of course, he was wrong, um, because we're still listening to it. It's being performed. And he, he prepared this concert suite, which we're going to look at, um, so his music definitely lives on.